so you need to know how to append files together. Well, I'll show you the different ways how you can append and also how to automate appending multiple files from a folder when there's new ones included and also to update if there's any additional columns added at a later date. So with that in mind, let's jump over to my Power BI desktop. So if you want to follow along, I've got all the data sets saved within a zip file on data.world, which I've linked in the description below. So the first thing I'm gonna show is how to just simply append two files together, or if you just wanna just do it one by one manually, how you can get that to work, and also the benefits of doing it this way, and also the cons. So the first thing you wanna do is go to how you want to bring in the file. In this this case I've got Excel files so I'm just going to import those and the first one I'm going to bring in is the 2014 and then all you have to do is just click on that one check that it is the right one here 2014 2014 and let's do transform data. And then once that's loaded up, you've got your data in here and it's all correct. And then all we wanna do is then go new source again, get an Excel file. And this time we're gonna bring in the 2015 one and then we click on that, check it's 2015, 2015, yep. And then do okay. And then all you have to do is go to the one you want to append onto. In this case, I'm gonna use the original one. I'm gonna do it in order, I'm gonna go 2014 and then append on 2015. All you have to do is go up to here. So under home, you've got append queries you can just click on that and then under there you've got the option because we've only got one table you can just go in and then select what the other table is or if you've got multiple tables you can just add it that way so if I just remove this and then add back in you can see it's there just as before and then you can add multiple if you had them so if we just do okay we now have the data appended nice and quickly and simply there so we've got 2015 now one of the things you'll notice if I scroll all the way to the end there's this extra column that's arrived and it only shows up for everything that's 2015 which is there and the good thing about doing this particular type of append is every time you add a new file it's always going to include all the columns that are in there and it will match up with any others as long as all these titles on these columns match then they will link and then it will append the information underneath any slight changes to them it means it will just create an extra column so it's always a good thing to double check that that's happened but this has added an extra column because subcategory doesn't exist exist in 2014 it's a new column that come in in 2015 and all it's done is just added it to the end so you got the information there and then you can rearrange it back to say if you wanted subcategory to be over here you can just move it like that and then you've got your information there and if that's all you needed to do all you have to do is just do close and apply but first thing you want to do is just click off enable load because you don't want to see it you just want to just see this one and then if we just do close and apply we now have our appended table we've got subcategory category as we can see here and then it changes when it gets to 2015 as we can see here and that's when all the orders happen and that gives you all your information now that one is all well and good if you are just picking up a couple of files and you just needed to just pen that information but what happens if you're being given on a weekly basis daily basis whenever it is a new file it's exactly the same format might have new columns might not just being saved into a folder it'd be really frustrating if you had to sit there and go oh new files come in oh, I need to quickly go in and create that file and then you've just got a sea of all these different files it's become messy if you end up having like 100 files and you don't want to keep doing that all the time and also it's not it's just not efficient the way around this is you have an option to be able to pull in basically a folder. All you have to do is go to your get data and click on more and then you get an option called folder and if you don't find it there you can just type it in and then it will show up. If you've got SharePoint folders as well it does the same but folder if you're just doing it from your computer all you have to do is just connect to that and then all you have to do is just click on browse but what I prefer to do is just find where my folder root is, copy that and paste it in. So in this case I've got it saved in my YouTube data sets and then I've got Power BI append and then and that's where I've got all the different files. So now if I just do OK, it will then show you a list of all the different files that are in there. So at the moment, I've only got four. So we've got 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017 sales data. Now in there, you could just load it in if you wanted to, and you can do transform data. And if you do transform data, it will just pull through the information like this, and then you have to transform it yourself. Or you can just do combine and transform data. So then what will happen is it will then combine all the data, and it does that by looking at what it calls your sample file and generally it will pick whatever your first file is and that's normally based on create date and in this case it's picking up 
here, 2014 as the first file, which is correct because it's in that order, or you can select which one you want to be your sample file. If you were just putting through a load of information and you weren't going to be adding any more to it, it's literally like, oh, this is last year's data. I just want to pull it all as one thing. And you know, one of these particular sample files has additional columns compared to the others, then just select which one you want and it will then pull through a sample version which will have all those columns. Now, because I'm pulling through the one that's 2014, and remember it doesn't have subcategory, which 2015 does, it won't recognize this. So what I will do is if I just go with simply now, first file, because most likely if you're doing this, you're going to have a file where new ones are going to be added. So you want to be able to do this technique is if you just import the files now, and then what it would do, it will do a whole transformation where it's converting everything into its different steps. So if we could look at the different steps, first we want to go down here we can see source where it's gone into the folder link that I said there so if you just did transform data and didn't do combine you'll get this information and then what it will do is then filter any hidden files it's fine and then you want to invoke custom function which is basically transforming the data and creating additional copies which it will then append onto each other so then you've got all these basically the information that's under it will then show up which is basically coming here combining the files once that's done it will then just give a rename and then it will just remove what the actual information is and so now it's created what the sample file is so you see all this information here you've got your sample file you've got your parameter which is the one that's basically going like oh, i want to copy this and then keep using that information we're going to technically override this whole information here and then you've got your transform file so that's what's allowing it to be able to be smart and pick up all the different files and then append them together but like I said, because we have decided to use the first file, you'll notice it's only pulled through the same information that we had for 2014, just without the additional subquery because 2014 doesn't have it. But because that's our sample, so it's only pulling those columns. And that's the problem. What you want it to do is basically look through all the files, look at all the columns, and then go pull all the data that matches any of these columns. And then you get all the data from all the different files. And it doesn't matter if someone adds additional columns in the future when they save the file. And we can see that this is definitely all data because we have 2017, 2016, 2015, 2014. So how do we get that information with all the additional columns? Like I say, you could have just gone to whatever the latest file is and select that as your sample file that picks up the information. It would have done exactly the same thing. It would have been absolutely fine. It would just pull through all the columns that you need because you know that last file has all these new columns. But if new columns come later, it won't know that. And that's why you want to do this little trick that I'm gonna show you now. So what you want to do is come to this bit here because this is at the point of where this file is one that's been used. We pull this information out. We can see all the data that we got here. Now, remember when I said this one had the additional subquery, this one has the subquery as well. And then this one, this one has additional information. It's now got customer name, which wasn't there before. We can see here, customer ID region and then customer ID, customer name region. So now you just have this additional extra information as well. We basically want to have all that information. But say if 2018 suddenly had all that information and then an extra one, but then removed one, then that would be different again. So the way to do this is we want to be able to go, what's all the column names, list them and then remove duplicates. And then instead of using the sample file as your means to get the columns, you're going to use this new list of column names to be your point of what's going to be appended on. And how you do this is if you go to the step here where it says remove other columns one, we want to just insert a new step. So if we insert that, it then basically copies what that step is. But what we want to do, we want to be able to get this section here. So all we do is do square bracket and then it creates the two. And then we want to copy the name here. So that's transform file. So we type in transform file and then if we click return it's now made that into a list so instead of having the bit all we've got is just that one column because that's all we need we just need to be able to just look at the data we don't need to know the name of the file or anything so now we got that i'm going to rename this and call it list 
Now this particular steps, you can keep building within it. So you can keep adding within this, within another one and another one. But for this example, I'm going to show you it step by step, just so you can see it broken down simply. And then you can clean up your steps. So you can just have it in one step instead of three steps, which is what I'm going to show. Now we have our list. We want to then insert another step, do that, insert step. So now we just have a table of information. We now want to list these columns. And how we do that is we want to do list transform. So we just type in list and then transform. There it is. And then it's removed what the name was. That doesn't matter. We're going to type that in again anyway. And then we want to reference what the last step was called. So that was called list. And then we want to get the column names. And how we do that is right. We write table and then column name. So we start typing column. There you are. And the best way when you're typing these to get the name, don't put the full stop. It will sometimes just go all over the place because it starts to think, oh, it's a new line and start looking for column instead of table column. So if you don't type in the full stop and just keep just typing, find the actual result. So now we've done this, let's do that and let's do that. There we go. So what this will do is then list you the column name. So here we go. Here's the column name and here's all the additional column names. Now you've got a list of column names, which is great. Now, if we just call this column names, because then we know what this is we now want to append all those column names together so we have a full list then all we need to do is insert a new step again and now we want to use something called list combine so we type in list com push that out see if it lets it type there we go list combine there we go and then open bracket and then close bracket we now have all those columns all together which is great we now have everything there so let's just call this one combine combine and now we now need to remove all the duplicates as you can see here we've got order id order id order id we don't want to pull through all that information you could technically go with it like this and you just have duplicate information that doesn't make sense so we just want to insert a new step to then look at these as distinct all we need to do is we do a space and then do list distinct they are and then open bracket and then Get to the end, close bracket, and then return. It's now removed all the columns that are duplicate. And these are now showing you all the column names that are within those four different files. And then if you add any new files, any new columns, they will get added automatically in here. So if we just rename this, remove duplicates, remove dupes. There we go. And then we can then look at our expanded table. Now, because we've done some changes, it's now broke. And what we need to do is understand what's happening here. So what we need to understand is this information, what that means, and this information, what does that mean? And this information is basically picking up what the, the last step or the step where the information needs to come from. That original step should have been all the way back here. So what you want to do is replace all this information with what that step is called. So if we go here, we remember this information here. We just want to copy that, the hashtag. Don't forget the quotation marks between the two because it's got spaces, it's put it in with quotation marks. You wouldn't get the quotation marks if it was just say column one, but because it's got spaces, it won't work. We then need to replace where it says transform file and remove dupes. And because of that, we need to remove the extra one there. And if we do return, it still won't work yet. And the reason being is this section here is still pulling the columns that are within the sample file. So it's still only looking at what's happening in 2014. But it's also confused because actually this is not even the last step as well. So what we want to be able to do is tell it to do a transform on basically the column names here. So instead of using the sample file, it's now just going to use this step where it says remove dupes to be able to pull that information. But we need to transform it first. So remember back here, we had transform file. We want to call that transform file because then it gives it its name. So you want to remove from here all the way up to the comma and then do in quotation marks transform file and then we want to go back to the one before and because it's got no spaces you don't need to worry about the quotation marks and the hash there that it's done there so now all we have to do is just do the last step name so whatever you call the last step is what you call it in this case we called remove dupes which is there and then if we click return we now have our file with all the additional information so if we go along and go to the end we can see we have sub 
category and customer name and if we keep scrolling down you can see when they start to add in and there we go and that would be 2017 and yep we can see that's 2017 and then there's the change type you can go in and then clean these up if you wish in these case i'm just going to call these text uh did, did, did. Ooh, wrong one that one text there we go and now that's done i can close and apply and if we go in here we now have our whole table with all the extra information added and because that's now set up whenever you refresh it will pick up any new data that is in that folder and will add any extra information and also any new columns that show up and even if some columns are removed in a future file the old columns will still show too because of how we did those steps so i hope you found this video useful if you did please give a like and subscribe and if you want to carry on your analytical journey check out these videos over here and as always until next time